So, with Classic right around the corner, I thought I would share with you my top 5 reasons to play Classic. Reason number 1 is the community. Back in vanilla, the community was totally different. First of all, there were no cross realm stuff back then, so you got used to seeing the names of people on your server in certain zones every single day, which could enhance some type of friendship. Let's say you were fishing in Stranglethorn Vale for gold, and every day some person was farming right next to you. Eventually, you will say hello to that person, and then you got the start of something. You also had the whole aspect of people's names getting known quickly, due to a couple of factors, but I think no cross realm and no real idea were the two big factors here. What I mean by this is, if you were a great tank, you would be known for it, and people would want you in their group. And if you were good at doing Deadmines boost runs and you did them cheap, you would be known for that as well. If you were a pretty affordable enchanter with every recipe in the game, you would be known for it. This also means that if somebody acted like a douchebag, either by simply being rude or even ninja looting, they would be known for that as well. So what I'm trying to say is reputation mattered a lot, and you could decide what you wanted your reputation to be, and you could get a good reputation in so many different unique ways, like the examples I just gave with tanking, enchanting, and dungeon boosting. Back in my day, we had one guy on my server who made it his life's mission to craft 10 slot bags and give out one bag to every new player. He told me he only gave out one though, even if I was a bit selfish and wanted four. I think this is a great gesture, and it just speaks of what the player attitude was like back in vanilla. Sadly, the attitude isn't really something Blizzard can change or give us back, that part is up to us. But I mean, you pretty much know that this guy giving out 10 slot bags to new players was loved by everyone, at least the new players receiving the bags. He even had enchanting and offered to enchant my weapons, but since I was playing a hunter and didn't see any bow enchants, I said no. People being dependent on each other also helped enhance the community, for example mages being able to conjure food and portals, warlocks giving hellstones and summons, and also when doing dungeons you needed other people. You needed a group of 5 people, and there were no dungeon finders, so you had to find 5 people on your server either by going to a questing area and whispering people or asking in general chat, trade chat or world chat to find group members. You also couldn't teleport to the dungeon, so often groups would walk there together and the walk could be long as well, so there was a lot of room for casual conversation while walking there. Once you were in the dungeon it was more difficult and time consuming than retail WoW dungeons, so it gave a lot more options to bond with your party members because you would spend all that time together. Another way players were dependent on each other was professions. For example, alchemists needed herbs and fish to create flasks and oils, and although they could in theory pick up, pick up both those professions, since fishing doesn't take up a profession slot, they often would not have the time to farm both herbs and fish, making them dependent on fishermen. Sure, you could go and buy fish on the auction house, but you could also whisper someone who sells fish and try to set up some long-term partnership with him that would aid you both. There are so many more reasons why the community is a big reason to play Classic WoW, but I think I covered the essentials, let's move on. Reason number two is everything is so much more meaningful. This one is a bit of a big one, but just let me explain. Getting a blue item, or especially an epic item, means so much more because first off, they are pretty rare and it takes time, skill, and dedication to obtain one. Blues were usually obtained from dungeons or elite group quests, which means you had to find people to team up with, and you had to defeat a more difficult mob. Epics were usually found inside raids or at the end of very long quest chains, which usually required more than 5 people to complete and it took a long time. Once you obtained those items, you also felt like the item themselves had more meaning, because in most cases you wouldn't get a better one for days, weeks, or even months. While in BFA, you're swimming in rares and epics from level 10, with quest items even having the chance of procking epic, and with personal loot, giving everyone rare items from dungeons 24-7. A great example of an item that can last you for days, weeks, or months is the Whirlwind Axe from the level 30 warrior quest which if you do it at level 30 it can last you until level 45 or maybe even higher. Another thing that is a lot more meaningful in classic is mounts. First off, you don't get your mount before level 40, and some people might not even get it at level 40 because of the gold it costs to buy it. The one thing they accomplish by giving mounts at level 40 rather than earlier levels is that you have to experience so much more of the world by foot, and you, ha you understand how long it takes to run from Stormwind to Booty Bay, or maybe even longer. 
the world feels bigger and you're used to spending a lot of time traveling, so when you get that mount which gives 60% increased movement speed, it just feels so good. And by making the mount cost a decent amount of gold, you also feel like you either have to grind gold or maybe even have to make some tough decisions like not buying spells when you level to certain levels to save that gold for a mount instead. Or maybe you have see a really good item on the auction house but you know you need to save the gold for the mount instead. It's also worth mentioning the level 60 mount which costs between 900 and 1k gold depending on your reputation and warlocks and paladins get it at a, at a reduced cost by doing the class quest. Don't get me wrong, the level 60 paladin and warlock mounts are not free, they have to pay some raw gold and a ton of materials in their quest lines, but the point is that level 60 mount is hella expensive and it requires you to grind to get it, while on BFA mounts are pretty much given to you since the cost is basically nothing, and I don't know a single person who was not able to get his mount at level 20 or level 40. Another thing that is a lot more meaningful classic, which ties both into community and weapons, is dungeons. Dungeons were way harder in classic and it required time. First off, the dungeon itself required some time to finish, but before that you had to walk to the dungeon, which took a lot of time as well. And before that you had to form a group for the dungeon, which could take time unless you play a healer, or a tank, or you have friends or guildies capable of filling those roles. Point is, if you don't have a pre-made group, forming a group can take time. And because it takes so much time to form a group, run to the dungeon, and doing the dungeon, complete, completing the dungeon just means so much more and feels a lot better than in BFA, if you ask me. Reason number three is team play. One of the first things you will feel when you play Classic is the need to group up with others. In a launch environment, I think this is because of multiple reasons. There will be a lot of competition over mobs, and in order to complete quests efficiently, you simply need to group up with others. Also, mobs hit way harder in Classic, and some classes will have a harder time leveling than others. For example, warriors and rogues have very low to no self-healing, which will make it more difficult for them to level solo later on. You will see people teaming up with things in Classic from level 1 to level 60 because of multiple reasons like quests, dungeons, raids, battlegrounds, world PvP, professions like skinning, herbalism and mining. Yes, there are even groups for professions. Reason number 4 to play Classic is the world feels so much bigger. I feel like this is for better or worse, but the world feels so much bigger simply because you have to run everywhere instead of having flying mounts, and because even if slash when you get your ground mounts, it takes a long time to go from for example Stormwind to Tearsfall Glades, or from Orgrimmar to Angora Crater, and there are also way less flight paths in Classic, so even if you have a flight path to where you want to go, you might have to walk a decent amount from the Flight Master to your destination. Flight paths and boats are also way slower in Classic, which also makes the world feel bigger. One great thing about long, slow flights from, for example, Darkshore to Tanaris is that it kinda gives you an active break, so you can take a 5 minute break from the game without losing efficiency, since you'll be flying anyway. This is the perfect opportunity to make food, grab a drink, or even take a quick shower, empty the trash, or anything you want to. Reason number 5 is it's a world of endless possibilities. There are so many things to do in Classic, so let me just list a couple of them. Leveling, raiding, dungeons, battlegrounds, world pvp, get grand marshal, get scarab lord, level 19 twinking, level 29 twinking, 39 twinking, 49 twinking, and maybe even 59 twinking, who knows. Gold farming, become a master of a profession of your choice, aka getting every recipe and becoming a known tailor or enchanter, or whatever your profession is, says, and becoming the richest person on the server, role playing, helping new people by giving them bags or other things they need, exploring the world and find and even finding glitches to places you're not supposed to find. There are so many things to do in Classic, and because everything takes so much time, you're probably not going to be able to do everything, and one thing that's for sure is that it's going to take some time. Now, I guess you can argue that you can do most of these things in BFA as well, but there aren't that many people doing it, and BFA kinda pushes the focus on max level activities instead of lower level activities, especially based on the fact that you can level a character from level 1 to 120 in less than 24 hours of playtime, while in Classic you would only be able to get to maximum level 30 in the same time span. 
Twinking will also be massively more popular in Classic than on BFA because of heirlooms not being in the game and because rare items will be harder to come by and more lucrative in Classic, so Twinking will actually take a lot of effort when it comes to getting best in slot gear. With all this being said, I understand that Classic won't be the right game for everyone, but since it's included in the same subscription base as BFA, why not just give it a try? I myself am really looking forward to Classic, probably mostly because of nostalgia, but also because I'm bored of BFA and I don't like where the game is going right now, but I still love World of Warcraft in general, so Classic might be exactly what I need. If you're excited for Classic like me, feel free to check out any of my other World of Warcraft Classic videos. I'll even leave a link to a video of my top 10 gold farms in Classic on the screen after this video, and a guide to which class you should pick, basically a video highlighting every class briefly to help you make your decision of which class to play a bit easier. Alright, that is the end of this video, I hope you enjoyed it, and if you did, please leave a like, and with that being said, I'll see you in the next one.